Morgan Lancotti with the Hinckley Institute of Politics to talk about how women are voting and what they're looking for in a candidate. And joining me now, we have Morgan Lancotti, the Associate Director of Hinckley Institute. And we called you to get your expertise specifically on women in this political season and just this presidential race. Specifically, Morgan, how are both Republican and Democratic candidates representing women and the issues important to them? Yeah, so with the Democrats, we have this historically diverse pool of candidates to start, and they really played that up. They talked about the women and the people of color that were represented on those debate stages. We've seen that whittle down. Even the weekend before Super Tuesday, we had a number of candidates drop out, and people were really surprised by right. that. That said, the candidates that are remaining are really still trying to appeal to as broad a coalition as they can, and they're trying to speak to those issues that women care about and that other minority groups care about as well. Tell us too, because I feel like, Morgan, you are on the inside of politics. You're an expert in this regard. Majority, if that's safe to say, of, of the population, are we as in tune with what's going on in the political realm? I don't know. So what are some of these issues that women are, that are important to women today? Yeah, we see that with women voters, they really care about education. They care about gun reform, but they also care about those issues that all candidates, that all voters focus on. They care about their pocketbook. They right. vote with the economy. And these are the things that they're following. And they're looking to the candidates and thinking, who is representing me? Who will fight for education? Who will fight for a strong economy for my family? And what do you have to say? Are, are women being represented in this field of both, again, Republican and Democratic candidates? So we saw in 2018 a historic number of women run for office and win. And that was primarily on the Democratic side, though we saw big numbers for Republicans as well. We will see, at least at the presidential uh, level, what happens with women. Uh, currently, our two front runners are white men. But uh, I think they will signal to voters um, what they're, who they're trying to appeal to and what their priorities are with their vice presidential candidates. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are going to be watching for that. And we may see early announcements. Uh, Biden is really going to play up the fact that Amy Klobuchar uh, endorsed him. And we might see him announce a VP running mate to try to get more female voters. So you've partially already touched on that. What are we looking forward to happening come November? Yeah, we have seen this widening gender gap between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. 2016, in that race between Clinton and Trump, it was a historic uh, gap. And that even grew further in 2018 with the congressional races. People are really wondering about 2020. Right. Will the Republican Party be able to convince some of those women, some of those voters to come back? Uh, we're especially seeing that with some of those down ballot races, as we call them, the congressional and the Senate and the gubernatorial races. Are they trying to get women to run? Can they rely on that vote? Or can Democrats continue to capitalize this and convince women that they are the party that represents them? What should we be paying attention to? Again, specifically women. What are some of these issues? If, it, like I mentioned before, you're not super in tune with your political mm -hmm. side, what should we start paying attention to, especially come November? So I think my advice to a woman would be the same as my advice to anyone, that you have to take that gut check and think about the issues that you really care about. It's true that we see women have gravitated to the Democratic Party, but at the end of the day, what do you care about? What affects your job, uh, your family, your finances, those issues that you care about? and you know, register to vote, start watching the news, try to tune into those issues that you really, um, that really affect your life and the, your community and figure out who you wanna vote for. And I think important also, as you said, to make sure we get out and vote. Absolutely. Utah had seen a decline in voter turnout for two decades and wow. we have seen that shift over the last couple of elections which a lot of Utahns are really taking heart in and we saw historic midterm I've said historic a lot this interview but so many things have been shifting Our the past few right. years yeah and we saw a huge turnout especially for a midterm election we're hoping we also see a huge turnout for this presidential primary it's so important okay Morgan Lyoncotti again with the Hinckley Institute we appreciate your time here today of course and um, here we go on this Super Tuesday it's Thanks going again. to be exciting